Well, when I got the call, I said to the to the dean, you must be reading off the law, wrong list. And I meant that. But there was no mistake, and there's no mistaking the contributions of lawyer, businessman, and television executive Jim Rogers. Speaking for Sunbelt, his chairman and CEO, Jim Rogers. This is my 50th year as a Las Vegas resident and 40th year as a Nevada attorney. Las Vegas this is the, is the Jim Rogers we know and love, the man who's never afraid to voice his opinion. I got on the air probably six months after we got the station, and I did editorials twice a week. Uh, which my mother would say, oh my God, how can you say those things? It started at a young age for Jim, in high school to be exact. I was the editor of the high school paper, and I was a madman with, a, uh, with pen and ink. Jim moved to Las Vegas in 1953 at the age of 15. He attended Las Vegas High School and was a crusader even then. I kept a copy of all of those newspapers. Oh yeah, I had, a, I had it bound. You can tell about my ego from that. And uh, I go back and read them every once in a while, Nina. And I thought, oh my God, how could I have written those things? Jim describes the sense of fairness that's been ingrained in him since childhood. He grew up with little structure. His parents felt it best for him to learn his own lessons. I think that I was given the benefit of setting out my own rules and figuring out what would work and what wouldn't work. As a youngster, one of Jim's favorite toys was an electric sweeper. Oh, I love vacuum cleaners. And uh, who, why, why that would be, I don't know, but that's one of my many neuroses. You know how I am. A man who believes in discipline and order. He had an entrepreneurial spirit at a very young age. I was in the lawn mowing and janitorial business at the age of 12. I said to my dad, I want to go into business. He said, uh, how do you propose to do that? I said, well, if you'll lend me the money, uh, let's go down and buy a power mower and I'll pay you back. The one thing that my father did <clears throat> instill in me, he said, put yourself in a position where you don't have to work for somebody. You don't want to be at their whim. If they don't like you, you're gone. And that's just what Jim Rogers did. After getting his degree in accounting from the University of Arizona, he tackled law school at U of A. In 1964, Jim opened his law practice in Las Vegas. From tax law to divorce cases to personal injury, Jim tackled it all. There again, I had a sense of, of what I thought was fair play, and I thought that that would allow me to get engaged in fair play. He was active in the Las Vegas law community for close to 25 years. Now, you might think a guy like Jim had his future plans all laid out. I didn't try to structure where I was going to go in life. I had no ultimate ambitions. I thought I wanted to take advantage of things as they came along. And I hoped that I had the talent to understand the difference between a good deal and a bad deal. It's nice to come home to TV3. He saw the deal of a lifetime in 1971, the prospect of owning and operating a television station. Well, I knew that licenses were renewed every three years, and I got a group of, of people together, and I filed a, a, an application for Channel 3, the Channel 3 license. I filed that in September of 1971. We went through competitive hearings for six or seven years, and in 1978, uh, we were awarded the license. One year later, KBBC was launched, but Jim wasn't done. One of the things about my personality is that if, um, if you had one word to describe me, I would say builder. I love to build things. If I had 10 station, I'd, I'd want stations, I'd want 20. If I had 20, I'd want 50. Currently, Sunbelt Communications owns 16 stations in five states. It's an empire that will undoubtedly grow in the coming years. Thank you for making Channel 3 the most watched station for news in Southern Nevada. I'm a risk taker. I. Uh, I really enjoy making money. I don't care anything about having it. And um, to me, the hunt is everything. The kill is very little. The buzz is gone pretty quickly after the kill.
That's partly why much of Jim's money goes right back to the communities where he does business. I really believe that financial success has two components. First of all, that you make it, but the second part, which is just as important and maybe more so than the first part, is what you do with it after you've got it. I think that you owe your community rent, and I feel very good about the things that we do in the community with the money that we've had. Jim's longtime business partner and close friend Lou Weiner said it best. And then he would say, "Now, Jim, the rest of what we have, we hold in trust for the public, because nobody ought to have as much money as we have. And as bright as you and I think we are, we really didn't make it. This is a convergence of a set of facts where we just happen to be standing here with our glove out, and the ball fell into it." In the year 2000, Jim Rogers was listed as one of Time Magazine's top 12 philanthropists in the nation. He's pledged and donated over 28 million dollars to UNLV's William S. Boyd School of Law, and he's given over a million dollars to the University of Nevada Reno. He's also made serious commitments to many of Clark County's public schools, like Lou Weiner and Lucille Rogers Elementary. In the end, Jim plans to give away three quarters of his net worth to education. As it's designed, my last check should bring my balance bank balance to zero. Jim is passionate about supporting education. I think the last great puzzle, part of the puzzle, for a first-class culture in this area is a fine university. We have everything else. We really do. We have all the trappings of success, but that doesn't develop a great culture, and only a university can do that. Jim doesn't do it alone. He and wife Beverly make a great team. She's the sweetest person I've ever known. She's very supportive、um, with all of the things that we do, and that's a lot. Jim's got some great hobbies, including his collection of over 200 vintage automobiles. When we first opened the auto museum over here, I frankly didn't think anybody would come through it, and now we have tours every other day. Jim has watched this town grow and change for 50 years. People will ask me from time to time, "Well, do you think we've lost it?" Do you think Vegas isn't as good as it used to be? And I say, no, I think it's as good and maybe a little better. It's a little better because of people like Jim. This is a great city. This is the greatest city in the world. No question about that.